Blog Talk Radio. Hello everybody, this is Amelia Santara. I'm sorry for the delay in getting going live. I think maybe Chrism is here now. One moment please and I'll check. Hello, is that you, Chrism? No, Amelia, it's Rosemary. And thank you for letting me tell you. He just left in his car to get somewhere. I don't know where he went last week. So he's going to be late. That's okay. What happens, Rosemary, is that only one of us can actually be host. So, uh-huh. you know, I hang, I hang on as a caller and then when he doesn't come, I have to go out and redial in. So that's what yeah. causes the delay. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. that's very good. Well, then, are you going to stay online? Yes. I may not be the whole time, but pretty much so. Yes, okay, I'm here. well, you can, you can co-host with me, Rosemary, until Chrism arrives. That's really cool. <laughs> well, I'll begin, I guess. Well, first of all, let me just say, listeners, that... Um, Unfortunately, my laptop is acting up. I think he died. I am unable to get the chat room up here in front of me. And the only device I have in front of me is my iPad. And unfortunately, in the same way as happens with Prism, I do not have a visual on the chat room. So let me just say welcome to everybody who's there. And apologies to you for not being able to convey any questions or comments that you might have to Chris and when he arrives. But as you do know, you can always phone in. And let me give you the guest call in number now, just in case you wish to do that. It's an American number. 347-934-0026. And you'll get through to me here in the studio. And I will then patch you through to Chris. So today's um, topic is going to be Kundalini and free will, or not, as the case may be. We're actually really looking forward to this topic because it's something that's come up and um, it's something that I think we're all very interested in. So I'm going to look forward to Chris and coming and um, speaking about this and giving us some teachings. So maybe I'll begin as I usually do, and I will let you know first of all about the seminars. This is going to be my final announcement of the seminar in New York. Anyway, you know, there's a point in letting you know about New York because it's happening this weekend. But just in case we have some new listeners, it would be worth mentioning that this year we're having two seminars in March and we're having another one um, already scheduled for Minnesota in September. And I will let Rosemary tell you a little bit about that in a moment. But the one that's happening in New York It will be the first time that Kundalini Awakening Seminars will have um, a seminar on the East Coast of America. And I'm really looking forward to it. It's happening in a lovely center, 35 miles north of New York City. And that will be on March the 22nd and March the 23rd. And then the following weekend in um, Ireland, we are also having a seminar, and there are places still available for that. That's happening on Saturday the 29th and Sunday the 30th. And please do get in contact with me if you're living in Europe, because really Dublin, it's very easy to get to Dublin from most cities, although I did have an inquiry recently from somebody living in Sweden, and that is one of the places that there are not cheap, um, you know, airfares to, but that said, most other cities do have, um, Ryanair is the carrier that would bring you to Dublin at a very good rate, typically. So do get in touch with me, kundalinimatters at gmail.com, and I would be delighted to tell you about the seminar and information on that. We're actually going to be staying at a very, very nice house. Um, I'm calling it the Seminar House. And it is situated overlooking Newgrange. Now, Newgrange is a very ancient and megalithic site in Ireland. It's actually older than the pyramids. Um, It's typically called a passage, but I think maybe 
a temple would be another way of looking at it. Uh, we went into it the last time we had a seminar in Ireland. That was back in October. And we had a very, very interesting time from a Kundalini perspective. And we've talked about that already on the show. Um, the house we're going to stay in is a, a lovely old stone house with stone walls. And it has a really nice um, setup, and we're going to have a very nice room there for our seminar. And we have Yvonne, and she's going to be preparing lunches, and we will be having light refreshments and fruit during the day. And it'll be a, it's a really lovely private space that we'll have exclusively for ourselves for those two days. And afterwards, if anybody is listening and they would be interested in doing um, a two- to three-day Kundalini tour, looking at the different megalithic sites that are in that area, well, then that is available as well if you would like to get in contact with me about that. So Kundalini Matters at gmail.com is my email address. And again, maybe at this point in time, while waiting for Chrism, I could maybe, if I can, oh, what is the email I'll see if I can remember it as we're going along. This is if you are interested in giving a donation to support Chrism and to assist with the Kundalini Awakening groups that he works with and the people. He does this job, you know, he's working constantly, as, Ro as Rosemary will attest to, 24-7, um, mm -hmm. because he works with people all over the world. Isn't that right, Rosemary? So, time scales, yes, you know, time yeah. for it. Yeah. So it's not something that really we can, you know, we can imagine at all. But when you're there, as Rosemary, you see his action, and I have, they have seen it as well. And really, he is totally committed to this work. And if he wasn't doing this work, there are very many people who, you know, would not be in such a good position in their lives as they are now. And um, so... Again, if you want to support the work that Chrism does, because he does this full time and is not therefore in a position to take paid employment, and he relies on donations from people. He never asks to be paid for the work that he does, and he doesn't charge a fee. And um, this is service, is devotion and service to the Kundalini, and it is for all of us an excellent example of, of that service and devotion in action. So if you want to go to the website um, that you can, you know, donate, it is called www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And up on the right-hand corner, you'll see the donate button. And really, after that, it is quite an easy thing. You just press the button and, and off you go. Whoops, I went off air for a second. That's the end of the announcements, and I have drawn it out as much as I possibly can, and there's no sign of chrism. So, um, I don't know, what will we do, Rosemary? Will we have a chat about free will ourselves and the choices? Will we maybe begin in that? Yeah, what do you I think? would suggest that we, I, I've been thinking as you were talking about that, and if there are people in the chat room if they have their phones nearby, they could call in and contribute. That would be great. That would be wonderful. And the number is 347-934-0026. So while we're waiting for that, maybe, Rosemary, you and I can have a chat. I mean, the thing, the thing that I, I would like to say about free will from my perspective is I've often said, you know, there's always a choice. We always have a choice. But what I really mean by that is we have a choice in how we respond to what the Kundalini does. We have a choice in how we choose to respond. We don't have a choice about our Kundalini awakening, though, or, or the different things that happen to us, to us. It is how we respond to that, how we surrender. That's where we have the choice. That would be my feeling about it, Rosemary, or my experience, yeah, really. What? Yeah, yeah. You're saying that we have a choice to forgive someone or not. We have a choice to yeah. surrender or not, to let it go. And, and if it's difficult to deal with the difficulty, 
Exactly, or not. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't, I don't remember hearing a whole lot about free will in the conversations. You know, as, as, and I don't think it's a, it's a focus for us, is it? We just assume. <laughs> what do we assume? Yeah, I don't know, but I the thoughts that occur to me when I hear people say free will, it's kind of wanting to make a stand for the freedom and that I really uh, want to have the freedom to do what I want. Yes. And uh, like I said, I don't remember hearing talking about free will. I'll be interested in what Kristen has to say. So as I'm sitting here listening uh, as you were speaking, Amelia, I'm thinking, I don't think what we think is free will is very free at all. I am limited by my choices from the stuff that I've done in the past, uh, what's familiar to me, what I think will pay off for me, what I perceive as good or right. And in being here at the ashram these almost three months, and uh, it's like I see parts of myself, how they've not been free at all. I wasn't even aware of some of the things that my (laughs) ego was doing. So when the ego is the boss, there's no freedom there at all. I mean, when it's rampant. No, well, that's the whole thing, isn't it? That is the whole thing, isn't it, Rosemary? That um, it's the ego is the one that, oh, hold on, we have, this might be prison. Okay, hello, is that prison? This Hello, is Eileen. Can you Hi, hear me? Eileen. Yeah. Hi. Can you? Uh, Prism, Prism just contacted me, and he said he can't get on as with you as the host. So I don't no. know what that means. Okay. Well, what that actually means is that I will go off as host, but I'm afraid I will lose the program if I do that. Can you contact him and ask him? Can he phone in? He doesn't have a phone. Is that? Um, I'm thinking on my feet here. Yeah, I leave I, as host. I'm not sure if we lose the program. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so he's saying I know that he cannot come. He cannot come in as host. That's why there's only one host. So what will I? If you if you go off, you should be able to get back on. I would think. I'll have to, my trouble is it keeps asking me if I will want to end the the episode and I have to be able to, well. okay, I'll keep, okay, I'll manage it. So I'll tell you what, if I go though, you'll also go, I think. Will you just assume that you're still online while I'm gone? And have a chat about free will and choices and ego. <laughs> Rosemary's still on? Yeah. Okay. Well, Rosemary, uh, you talk. Talking. I'll tell you if I hear you. No. Okay, let you good. Stay on, let yeah. you stay online with her. Um, I, I'm stalling here really in the hope that Chrism will phone in because that would be okay. But if he has no phone. Right. I'm going. I'm going I, think, I think I have no option then but to cut off as host and hope we don't lose the show. If we do lose the show, listeners, apologies. And um, And there are two people in the chat room besides me. I actually got into the chat. So, I, okay. Okay, I'm going to, it's very interesting. I'm not, no, guys, I'm not being given an option here, actually, yeah. to cut off. The only way of yeah. leaving as host now is if I end the episode. Eileen, can you please Amelia. type with Chris yeah. and... Amelia, I'm understanding that Chris will get on as host and the program will continue. No, she's saying it may close it completely, Rosemary. Yeah. And now she's not back on. I well, cannot... I... I cannot What's leave short? the studio without ending the episode. I do not have a tick here. All right, let me, let, me, yeah. 
let me try to get him, see if he answers. I'll try to get him, and then I'll call you back. Okay? Thank, okay. Yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay, bye. bye. I was wondering, uh, Amelia, you're Amelia. saying that it would end the program, but can he pick it up and start restart it? And no, once the end, the episode is over, it's done. Sometimes Chrism has got disconnected as host accidentally, and that seems to be okay. Um, but you see, here to manage the studio, if I the only option I have here is to end the episode if I want to leave as host Rosemary. Yeah. And I know that if I end the episode, that's the end of the episode. Okay. So, therefore, let's stay and let Eileen um, see if Eileen can manage it. Does Chris have a phone yet? No. We'll have to wait. Yeah, well, then he's not going to. And he, yeah, it's not going to work. Let's see. Let's if we wait keep and talking see. When he drives, yeah. If he drives and gets himself back, he's not more than 10 minutes away, I don't think. Oh, you could, have said that. Is, you, you could have said that actually, and um, we should have said that and, to Eileen, yeah. and she could, he could just have your phone. Okay, this is not going to make very good listening on the archives, guys. <laughs> well, let's just see. Let's see. Let's yeah. see we think it's not going to be too long, but. Yeah, um, so let's get back to chatting then about, um, and we would really appreciate if somebody. Um, else would like to phone in fast G, if you're there give us a call and ah somebody else is here let's see who it is it might be Eileen hi Eileen hi um Amelia Chris said just go ahead and do the show because he has if you don't have any option he seemed to think that you would have another option well, I don't. So, so if you could ring him again and tell him he's not that far from the ashram and he can just take Rosemary's phone. Yeah, just drive. Okay. No, I, 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 I think you, you need to do the show. <laughs> what? Sorry? I, all right. I'll, t- I'll try to get a hold of him again and Please suggest him go to the ashram and get the phone. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Let us All know. right. Let us know. Thank you. Okay. Bye. That's okay. good that there's a connection there. <laughs> it's amazing. As, as I'm looking at my studio here, you see, I have a little red mic that you and I can now speak with each other. I have a blue mic, which puts people on mute. So, you know, when you ring in Rosemary and you're listening to the show, I have the blue mic pressed until you wish to speak with Chrism. And then next to that is that another icon where I can speak with you while Chrism is talking to the audience live. Then there's another button that disconnects a caller, but I don't have that option. You see, my only option is to end the episode. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. There, there, so that's there's and Chrism, this situation has never happened before. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so which case, in while we're talking. What, what we're talking about that there there doesn't seem we're talking about free choice. I don't you you don't have a free choice there. You you do well, of doing something or not, but to keep this going and see if we'll come there's that's the choice that we hang on here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about that. I mean do so when we're talking to each other I would still say there is always a choice. I, I mean, that's that's how yeah. I feel, you know. I mean, I totally get what you're saying about the ego, that, you know, the ego, you know, wants to control and all of that. But is, is it not about when something in the Kundalini context now, um, we don't have a choice with regard to what is happening, but we do have a choice in how we react. Or do we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do. I mean, the safeties, aren't they something that we use in the choices that we make with regard to our awakening? So we, as we were saying, you would choose forgiveness as, um, as a way of responding 
to what is, you know, happening in our lives, to the challenges. We would choose all the different aspects of love, really. I mean, we choose love or we don't choose love. Is that... And do we yeah. have the freedom... Do we, do we not have the freedom to do that? Yeah, I think that we do, except we, we sometimes think we don't. We sometimes think we don't have a choice. When, okay. when we do. And the other things I'm thinking now, remembering how I've distinguished um, Kundalini's uh, interaction in me, and I've shared with them a couple times of just stopping and helping two children cross the street with their bikes, that I had my car in park and was out on the street and almost watched Hello? myself doing it. Hello, Eileen? No, that's you just faded out there again. Can you go back to you? You had two children with their bikes. Yes. So when the moment all those pieces happened to me, that I was doing that out on the street, I was not. I didn't have an experience of choosing that. It was Kundalini guidance taking over mm. the actions, mm. and it and it happened. I only paid attention oh. to it after. I totally understand what you mean, Rosemary. Absolutely. And And you're breaking up, Amelia, if you can. In context, things that we have. You're breaking up. You're breaking up, and I didn't hear what you said. Amelia? She's not there right now, but I don't know. Amelia? Oh, Rosemary, are you Hi. there? Yes, I am, but oh, you were I... gone. But Kristen has just came in, so here he is. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hi, Kristen. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know. Unfortunately, as the, the listeners know this already, I had no option. Um, I would have had did to I, end the I? episode. That's okay. Well, Rosemary's kind enough to lend me this telephone, so uh, apologies. But in a way, it's good because you're being saved from a radio show from the Denny's restaurant parking lot. So you won't get all the traffic noise that you would normally get, as, as well as, you know, the good food. So, um what have you done, Amelia? Where are you at? Well, besides panicking, um, yeah, Rosemary, I've made all my announcements, and Rosemary and myself have just been chatting about um, free will. And we're okay, sort of right. saying um, we don't okay. have free will, and we do have free will. Free, yeah, so basically, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't, I, Glad I you're can't here. disagree with that. Okay, are you ready? Are uh-huh. we on the air? Are we on the air? I'm going to go on blue. I'm, we are on air, and I'm going blue now so that there'll be no I interference, cannot, okay? I, I, I cannot see you, though, just so you know that. I can't see anything. I'm talking into a phone. Oh, I understand that. I understand that. So I will go by the, the, the cues in my ear. Are you, you know, okay. you let me know. Okay, I'm going blue Very now. Good. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. So yeah, the topic today is about choices, kundalini and choices. And to some degree, within a kundalini context, we have total and complete choice. But it's not the choice of the body. It's not the choice of the mind. It's not the choice of the heart. It's the choice of our karma. Uh, within Oh, you're going to hear some birds in the background, so please... Don't, don't be alarmed. I'm not in the Amazon, although sometimes it feels like it. Uh, so within the context of karma, as we, have, uh, as we have been refining ourselves through our various lifetimes, uh, you know, the lifetime of a farmer, the lifetime of a warrior, the lifetime of a healer or a, a politician or a, 
a ditch digger or a person who mows lawns like me, uh, within the context of those refinement lifetimes, we are given specific choices as our evolution develops. And as it develops, and, and we refine and refine, we come to an area where we begin to receive the options of divine grace inside of a physical medium, and inside of a physical body. And please don't mis- mistake the word medium for somebody who is, you know, a, a hotel for disembodied uh, spirits. Uh, what we are with regards to that choice, we're given the, the choice then, and, and it's, it's almost not even a choice because as you take the next body, the, the body that's going to become kundalini active, uh, the soul has been working at this and working at this for a very, very long time. Uh, literally, at, you know, uh, 10 lifetimes would, would be close to a 1,000 years. And, and in many cases, it is far more than 10 lifetimes that has been the refinement uh, protocol for, you know, for the individual, for the individual development, evolutionary development of the soul. And so when the soul reaches, you know, you're, you're, you're coming to the top of a certain peak within the evolutionary matrix of the soul development. And as that soul, that person reaches that peak, you know, they're, they're, they're handed this great, great, beautiful gift to say, okay, in this lifetime, you, you have, have the kundalini coming awake within you. And, and so, of course, there's going to be some karmic things that you'll need to tie up as a child and, and so on and so forth, all the different... Uh, uh, activation and karmic balances that have to take place within the body uh, as as the person leaps uh, towards this opportunity. This this is a great and beautiful gift that is being given, and the soul the soul knows very well that this is so. Now, hang on, I'm going to try to take this cell phone out of my head for a moment. How does this work? Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, I'll try not to rock the chair. So as as you look at the life before you've taken it, you're looking at the patterns of probability and the life is showing, you know, the, the different patterns of probability. And, you know, there most of those will include a kundalini activation within certain karmic guidelines that a, that a person will come into. So it can be any, as easy as one person may choose a lifetime where, uh, you know, they're born a certain gender to a certain family. Well, we'll just uh, we'll just uh, throw out the uh, the idea that we'll say the family is uh, of the middle class, and so they're not poor and they're not super rich, but they're able to to hold their own and they're able to uh, to provide a stable and and beautiful uh, learning and growing experience for their children. And we'll say that uh, you you are one of those, those those kids, one of the one of the uh, one of the kids, and uh, we'll just make it a, a daughter. So you're the daughter of this middle class family uh, somewhere in this world, and and we'll just say because we're talking mostly for folks in the West who who don't have a lot of uh, information about the Kundalini, as opposed to those in India and China and and some of the uh, some of the other countries on in, in that area of the world. Uh, we'll, we'll say that you're in a Western technological environment, say somewhere like Germany or France or the United States, and we'll say that you're the youngest daughter uh, out of two, and we'll say that uh, uh, you, as as a as a person in that uh, context, you're looking at the life and and you're going, okay, yes, yes, yes. When when I'm about thirty or so then the kundalini is going to come up. And before then, I have the availability of living through very specific karmas, uh, difficulties in life, challenges in life that will precondition me for that kundalini uh, awakening to happen at the age of 30. And then it happens. Boom! At the age of 30, the kundalini comes up and, and begins to transform the five bodies of human expression, which I'll, I'll name uh, the physical body, the mental body, the emotional body, the psychological body, and the spiritual body. 
And as, as these transformations take place, well then, if you've been listening to any of these conversations before, you'll know that, that uh, many, many, many uh, variants and, and opportunities and challenges are given for the person to, to have uh, the kundalini as it comes through. So even as you're having the kundalini, you're also balancing karma. All of this is due to the choice that you've agreed to have. Make sure I'm still here. Uh, can you? Is this going through, or am I just talking to the air? This is what? going through, Chrism. This is going through. Oh, I see. Can Weird. you hear me? Oh yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, very Hello? clearly. Hello. Okay. Hello. Very good. Very good. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 There's a time delay, Amelia. But there's not. You're coming across clearly, so please continue. If we have any calls, I will interrupt you. Thank you. And Thank you very much. Okay? All right. Okay, and so the person, before they take the body of that uh, daughter in France of a middle-class family uh, who is having, you know, the, the pattern of probabilities that, that this person, this soul chooses, is in a middle-class family in a technologically uh, operative uh, country of the world, of the Western world, uh, uh, we'll, we'll say France. And so the choice was made before the person took the body. The choice was made. And not only was the choice made, it was, it was made enthusiastically. Kundalini is a huge, huge blessing, even though the challenges that, that uh, a person can, can uh, encounter may not seem like a blessing all the time. You know, and this is, this is clearly shown with people that are having Kundalini syndrome. And let's go ahead and talk about some of those options as well. Uh, in some ways, if a Kundalini person or, or, or anybody who is approaching the Kundalini looks at the patterns of probability that, that a life uh, is going to give to them, and there, so we'll say there, there are A, B, C, and D patterns of probability. There are more, but I'm just using four, four examples as, as, a, as just a, as an easy teaching model. So uh, the person will choose, okay, the most challenging one would be uh, um, probability B. And probability B uh, contains the possibility that I may think I'm crazy and I may be put into a psych ward. Uh, society will treat me very badly and try to, uh, to uh, encase me or, or, or hold me captive with chemicals for a good portion of my life. And uh, I'm going to do my best not to let that happen. I'm going to do my best not to let the fear take hold of me, but I this is the best opportunity for me to burn as much karma, or should I say balance as much karma as I possibly can, you know, as the kundalini comes up. And if, and if I can do it, if, if I can keep that fear out, oh, my gosh, what a beautiful, wonderful, amazing blessing uh, that will be, not only for myself, but for, more importantly for those around me, for the environment, for the world, for the cosmos, for the multiverse, Okay. And this is, this is the choice that the person has. And so the, the person comes into the life and, and you know, you know uh, probability B, and, you know, it happens to them. And, and, and they struggle. They struggle very hard. And some of them don't make it. Some of them will commit suicide. And some of them will indeed be interred uh, by the, uh, the unawakened medical society and put into a psych ward, put into uh, a, a chemical prison of lithium or, or any of the, the many SSRI drugs that they try to do to regroup the brain, the, the hubris of the medical community to think that they can regroup God's brain is amazing to me. But we have it here, and, and we have hubris in many different ways. So that is the quality of the choice that a person who chooses the, the possibility of Kundalini syndrome to happen to them, this is the choice that they're making. 
But, you know, and it's a risk. It is a gamble. You know, there's no guarantee that, that they'll find the, the, a, a teacher or, or a source of information that will allow them to come out of that fear, to balance their fear, to realize that this is a gift. And, oh, my gosh, you know, this is a huge new uh, multi-vectored world that is opening up where, yes, there are discarded entities, and no, they're not all nice. Oh, my gosh, it's not like cotton candy and, and happy floating chocolate bunnies as we come into Easter here in, in the States. So it's not all peaches and cream, and oh my gosh, you know this. You know they may not be able to find those levels of information, and even if they cannot, they are still succeeding. Just to even approach the Kundalini is a gift in and of itself, and when it awakens within you, and even as they go to fear, and even if they commit suicide they will be given the option to go back again and again and again and again as much as they need to in order to come into a life where they can sustain and, and thrive within, within a kundalini activation and awakening. So in many ways, our choices are not of the body, meaning that we do not sit here in our beautiful, wonderful flesh temple and go, hmm, let me think, oh my gosh, rosemary. You know what, I, I, I was thinking today that maybe I'll just activate my kundalini. I heard it's kind of cool. What do you think? Well, that's, I don't think it works that way. Well, yeah, but I, I, I was reading on the web, and of course, you know, everything on the web is true. And so, <laughs> so yeah, I think this weekend I'll, I'll go and activate my kundalini and see how that goes. And, and it's not really like that, because try as you might, if you are not karmically prepared to have the kundalini, whether it goes well or not for you, you're not going to get it. Ask the millions and millions and millions of people in, in India and China and who want the kundalini, the millions and millions of New Agers who, who pretend to have kundalini through Reiki or other, other forms, not all of them, but some of them, you know, and want to have it, and yet, you know, they paid their $30 to be a master in Gosh, you know, it just doesn't seem to be working out. Maybe I'll become a tarot reader or something else of, of, uh, of a similar nature. It is not that easy. And yet, as I say that, and yet, even, you know, the, the enlightened masters will tell you that, well, you know, once, once you're karmically prepared, they don't typically say that part. But I'll say it. Once you're karmically, once you've reached a karma uh, expression that is of uh, the appropriate refinement for Kundalini to take hold in the physical system, then it's it's not that hard. And, and, and in many ways, it just happens all by itself. Now, it's not to say that part of the pattern of probability uh, that the person who's awakening, uh, you know, a lot of that will require a teacher. And a lot of the people who are listening to this program right now, uh, they're not listening because uh, they choose to listen from a body angle. They're listening because their kundalini is compelling them to answer, to, to listen to these, to this information. And there's a big difference there. Okay, you can, you need to, for those of you that have the kundalini, you know that it's almost like having a, a your mundane consciousness and then this huge, divine, amazing consciousness within you at the same time. Uh, and, and, you know, this, there are very, very different choices that are made uh, uh, for the person from divinity uh, as compared to the choices that a person makes from a mundane uh, uh, point of reference. And so for those that don't have the Kundalini awakened, there is a part of them that does have the Kundalini communication occurring. Uh, kundalini exists throughout our life. We you know, we, we, the, whole, the whole force behind uh, the sexual uh, act is, is, you know, is for the most part governed by the kundalini. You know, the replication of the species, the, the, uh, the, the, the joining of the, of the two bodies to, to form the one body. Uh, we are a simulacrum of what is happening to us with the kundalini as, 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 uh, as uh, the man and the woman come together and make the child. Well, so does sacred male and sacred 
female come together in order to make the Kundalini awakened person. It is a reflection of who we are. It's just a different level uh, that that reflection is, is taking place within. So we have these choices. We make these choices. We choose uh, sometimes before the life, sometimes within the life, but we choose to have it always. It's not an accidental occurrence. And so as we go back to the, to the, to the youngest daughter of a middle-class family in France who has chosen the option to, to, to be that person and to have that kundalini, well, all of a sudden it comes. You know, the, the, the person may just one day ask, you know, well, you know be compelled to ask, uh, okay, I need to know more about uh, the cosmos. She, she'll ask herself or she'll ask God or she'll, she'll just be hiking and just, you know, ask, ask something or just put, put the, the question out there and boom, Kundalini comes up. And then, oh my gosh, all of a sudden all of this uh, information to, to find information about Kundalini to to kind of match up the symptoms and to to begin to form an ideology and an information structure that allows this this woman to have the kundalini in a healthy and safe manner begins to come to this individual and and as it comes to her and she and, and we'll presume that she responds positively to this well boom she goes further and further and further into her enlightenment and and uh, and you know, this this is typically one way that this can occur. Another way that the choice is made is through the choice that I gave you with regards to the uh, Kundalini syndrome, but also it, it, it's blunt trauma. Blunt trauma to the lower spine and to the tailbone can also activate the Kundalini. And once again, this is a choice that was made uh, beyond the body or before the body was taken because not too many people are going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to... I wanna, I want to be skiing down a hillside and slam into a tree at 30 miles an hour. Most people are going to go, eh, maybe not for me today. <laughs> so so you, need to, you need to understand that many of the choices that have to do with the kundalini occur before the body is given, simply because the, the ego of the body or the the uh, the safety and security systems of the first and second chakra of the body will want to kick in and say, no, 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 don't do that. Don't hit the tree at 30 miles an hour. It will be painful. And so the choices have to be made outside of the uh, incarnated paradigm, outside of the person's life uh, as they live their life, uh, uh, you know, with the kundalini. And, and so... In many ways, Rosemary and, and Amelia were, are quite correct when they say, well, we have choice, but we don't have choice. For the most part, we have choice uh, from a spiritual context and the soul evolutionary context. The only way you're going to get the kundalini is because choices were made before the body was taken. As the karma is being reviewed and the person is going, okay, 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 so uh, the past ten lives have had a certain... Uh, quality that that allow me now to have a kundalini life, a divine flesh life, and yet I'm going to have to go through some very very strong uh, physical pressures. I may have to hit a tree at 30 miles an hour while sliding down uh, a slope of ice on two wooden sticks or fiberglass sticks, as you may have it, and 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 slam into a tree, and, and then my kundalini will awaken, and then I'm going to go through these perambulations of, of seeking knowledge, finding out what's going on, why is this happening, and at the same time I'll have to fight off the doctors, fight off the psychiatrists, fight off the, the counselors who know nothing about what is occurring to me, and yet my ego self will be going, oh, gosh, I need help, I need help, I need help, and so I'll go to the counselor, I'll go to the psychologist, I'll go to the MD, I'll go to whoever I can find that, that has any information on this, and hopefully I'll be able to to make sense of this and bring uh, uh, stability back into my life. Well, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. This is why it is such a blessing that uh, Amelia and John O'Connor of, uh, of, of the Kingdom of Kerry in Ireland, this is why it's so, it's so important that this information is being given. And I want to invite all of you 
to share these interviews, to share this knowledge with, with your family, with your friends, whoever you think uh, can have and hold this knowledge in a way that is beneficial to them. Share these interviews. Share this information. Don't hold it all to yourself unless, of course, <laughs> you know, if you have people there who would maybe uh, use it against you. Don't share it with those people. <laughs> So there, you, you also have the choice here in this life. Once you, you've reached a certain level of understanding that, oh my gosh, I'm having kundalini. Well, now there, there just the K word, just the word kundalini will make a huge level of difference in a person's life. Huge level of difference. Uh, and because all of a sudden you have a you have a, a word to reference, you can you can go into the ancient Vedic uh, texts. You can go online. You can Google the word Kundalini. You can you can Google the two words Kundalini awakening, and you can. There's a whole menu of choices that you can choose from that will allow you to receive specific qualities of information. And then you can choose from, from listening to these many different options of information, you can choose the one that feels the best to you. And in many ways, this will be controlled by your kundalini. So even though you'll have the feeling that you're being given choices in, in, in a larger context, no, no, it's the kundalini that is helping you to make the best choice for you. And so... Uh, we'll say that, oh, well, geez, you know, I, maybe I'm just going to go on, on YouTube and I'm going to go ahead and go Kundalini Awakening in you and see what comes up. And then once again, you'll have all these options and choices. And yet, from a, from a greater point of reference, from a higher perspective, your Kundalini, your sacred male, your sacred female that are joined now, that are married, that are dancing on the top of your head, or it feels like it, uh, will begin to help guide their kundalini infant towards a safe and secure level of information that allows them to develop and to evolve within the divine flesh uh, in a positive, constructive, and, 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 uh, and evolutionary guided manner. And so I want to uh, invite you to, to call in with a question. Uh, Amelia has the number. I know it's 347-something. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step <laughs> off. <laughs> okay. It's 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Amelia. And I do, I do want to really shout out a thank yep. you to Amelia for, for covering uh, as I was sitting there in the Denny's parking lot going, well, how come I can't get on here? <laughs> I waited until the very last moment <laughs> because we can only have one host. It's a bit of a pain, isn't it? But anyway, Chris, and can you, what, is there a difference? I mean, I'm just sitting here. We, when Rosemary and I were having our conversation, it's interesting. We didn't use the word choice. We were speaking of free will. Um, and is free will the same as choice? Are choices an option? Is free will different? Do you know? Our choice is an option if you will different. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. This is, you know, I'm, I, I'm just wondering if there's a difference. I'm, I'm thinking out loud, which is not a good, a good idea. <laughs> no, no, actually, you know, no, no, no. Uh, you know, as I've been telling Rosemary here, because she also has strong levels of, uh, of, uh, of ego, uh, ego-based control mechanism. Don't invalidate. <laughs> Don't invalidate you. Both of you are Kundalini awakening people, and you've already passed through many of the hurdles. Uh, and, and so I want you to validate your information and validate your thinking out loud because in, in many ways I think it's very constructive and very helpful. Uh, and a lot of people do. I do. You know, when I'm, when I'm uh, just looking at my own equation, you know, I'll think out loud and kind of – actually, I, I, it's, it's a weird blend. It's, anyway, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's a different subject. Uh, choices, <laughs> choices at free will. Uh, <laughs> choices are made. Choices are made Thank by you. the will. Choices are made by the by the will. The will is the person. The the and and in many ways, 
it's the 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 infant ego, or if you look at it within a huna, H-U-N-A context, this would be the unihipili and the uhane. But within a English context, uh, free will is uh, basically the the option of being able to choose. I have the free will to do this show, which means I my my choice, my free will choice is to do this show, okay? So it's basically the same thing, uh, but it's uh, kind of semantically different. Um, Certainly within the context that I'm using it, uh, free will and choice mean the same thing. Uh, You are choosing to do a certain thing, and yet within the Kundalini awakening context, uh, the Kundalini is offering you the choices that it wants you to choose from. So show you know the, the 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 sacred circuit will go okay well for our for our little uh, divine French girl here we'll use that that uh, example uh, okay she's going to be able to choose between this 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 and that that's all she gets and so that that French girl living up living in living in the French society well she'll have to choose uh, you know how between those four choices, you know, she wants to go with it. And so, in a way, we are allowed to choose, but we are, uh, we are given the options of what we're allowed to choose from. So, in a greater, grand context, no, we have no choice at all. Absolutely none. And yet, within a physical, incarnated context, we have all kinds of choices, or at least we have the choices that our sacred circuit allows us to have. Does that clear that up at all? Yes, it does, actually. That makes total sense. <laughs> so, so in a way, you're, you're, you're both correct. I mean, but for me, I'm not separating free will from the ability to make a choice. Uh, it's just that the, 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 the will, once you reach the divine, oh, oh, gosh, I'm getting a whole level of information here. Just hang on a second. Let's, 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 okay. okay. It's almost too much. Mm. Uh, okay. Um, mm. I get I get a memory wipe when that occurs. Um, one moment. those of you that have bliss, you can understand how difficult it is to 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 blend it. Okay, so so with these levels of choice that we have and yet we don't have at the same time, we are we are allowed to make mistakes. We are allowed to have uh, success within the understandings of the Kundalini. I'll be talking very slowly now because it's not easy to transcribe or to to translate. Uh, It's it's perfectly okay um, in your voice. Take, you know, yeah. Slow so, is good. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I just have to take a moment here. Talk with Rosemary, would you? Absolutely. Hi, Rosemary. 
Hi. Hi. Well, just just to say that when bliss occurs for Chrism, um, I know that he said that he gets a memory wipe. So what he was speaking of previously sometimes is gone. And when this happens, you know, I could have said what it was he was speaking of, but I wasn't sure what was what was going on there. Um, and also, I sort of myself don't remember exactly what he was speaking of either. <laughs> But I can feel that um, here listening, you know. Um, so, Rosemary, what would you like to say? Say something. Yeah, here, yeah, here he's back. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to, to to give this to you. So a lot of you who are listening now, I have to warn you right off the bat, there's a lot of energy coming into this word, into the... For those of you who are K-active, you will know, you will feel this. This is coming in, and these have activation handles on them, so you just need to know this in advance. If you don't want to activate the Kundalini, don't listen to these words. Just hang up. Um, Choice and free will uh, exist, but we are only, we are allowed to have, oh, there it is. We are allowed to have the illusion of choice. In the greater context, in the greater scheme of things, there is no choice. I mean, the, the, the choice is already made as you enter into the human evolutionary game. And I just use the word game because all life and consciousness strive for a divine contract or a divine experience. Uh, this is why many, many, many life forms will not choose to, to take the body, uh, the humanoid body on this planet as a as a level of experience, because it is it can be so amazingly difficult to go from you know hundreds of senses to five, uh, and at best six to seven when when the kundalini awakens, and then there's a whole level of, of evolution of having the kundalini in the flesh and, and being a person that has tremendous power. We are not allowed to express tremendous power any you know within a, a, a divine flesh kundalini context any more than you would allow your infant or your two-year-old to, to drive your car on the freeway. Okay? Might not end well, right? And so we certain controls are placed upon us that that will allow us to have this energy, to work with this energy and walk and talk with this energy and yet not to the point where we're throwing cars across the freeway with our mind because ego control is one of the most important qualities that must exist for the person in the early activation and awakening areas of the Kundalini. And for any of my students, including Rosemary, who wrote this beautiful post today about her last day at the ashram, ego control is the essential modality, uh, one of the first primary modalities that needs to be in practice. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to be 100% ego controlled. You won't be. Certainly not as you're living in the Western society uh, uh, of this time stream, of this point of now within the ever-evolving uh, physical dimension. Okay, so certain controls are placed over us as we have the Kundalini and as we work towards having the Kundalini. Many people, I can't. So many people go, "When am I going to get the powers that come with the Kundalini?" You know, and it's just not going to happen for these folks. But they're given the understanding that they can have tremendous power, and this is true. But for some of the, for, for some of them who ask about the powers, and, and I'll say, well, go ahead and practice the safety protocols. And uh, some of them do, very few, but some of them will begin that practice, and they will, by that choice, by that choice, and by the lure of having great power, they make the choice to, to practice a, a level of protocols that begins to, to karmically reorganize 
their focus and their and their strengths and their what it is that they desire and what it is that they choose to have in their life in this incarnation. And so as that occurs, as that lure is taken and, and they begin to immerse themselves by the by the the Maya of their choice. Well, then, wow! They 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 begin to enter into a Kundalini uh, uh, classroom, so to speak, and that Kundalini classroom is controlled explicitly by the Kundalini. You have to understand the Kundalini knows your karma. It knows what you need to do, and you wouldn't even hear the word, or you wouldn't even take that that lure of, of great power if the Kundalini didn't allow you to do so. And yet it does understand that you must be given the ability to feel as if you are in control. The ego will always want to be in control. And to survive on this planet, you need to have a strong ego. You know, to, to survive as a as part of this predatory planet, uh, you need to have an ego that will allow you to survive. You need to be able to say mine, or no, or yes, or give me that. You know, look to your two-year-old. <laughs> look to your two-year-old, and you can see how the Kundalini is looking at you. <laughs> or four-year-old, or six-year-old. <laughs> Amelia's got six kids. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. Rosemary has taught untold thousands of students in her in her in her years of of working with children and teaching them and 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 and, and helping them survive in this in this world of of survival. And so, what is really you know the the real uh, crucible is is taking that survival mechanism and allowing the kundalini to take that over for you now. You you have reached a level in your spiritual maturation that allows the next level to be attained, and that next level is kundalini. And so as the, the, uh, the drive to have divinity uh, or to become the divine uh, continues within a person, well, the divine is going, well, fine, 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 yes, you've done well, you, you've reached this level of, 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 of awakening, and, and so, yes, of course, you can take this class. And so now you're sitting in the Kundalini classroom, and the Kundalini is your teacher. And, 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 and sometimes the Kundalini will allow a certain teacher's aid <laughs> to, to teach, to teach the person certain levels. And that would be me. I would be the teacher's aide. I was like the 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 I don't <laughs> even that is, is bordering on self aggrandizement really. I mean I, you know, I look at that and I go, yeah. But yeah, so you are given that Maya of choice. It's it's a choiceless choice in a way because we all Within the Kundalini context, it's it's the divine flesh, and we understand that, or at least we feel that. We feel compelled to understand that. And as and as the the the, the, the French girl in middle class, technologically advanced France, is doing this or that, well, she understands that. Okay, I have to make certain choices, and I have to take certain levels of information that feel right to me, that feel right, that that have proven themselves in my physical existence to be the correct choices. And you will know this. Your intuition is now controlled by the Kundalini, and the Kundalini will give you an intuitive uh, yay or nay about certain levels of information that are coming through. And, and one, of the, you know, one of the challenges that, a, that, that Kundalini people have is to discern between discarnate information and Kundalini information. And this is not always easy to do. And the Kundalini knows that this is not always easy to do. That the Kundalini within the person knows that on a predatory planet like this planet Earth is, as beautiful as it is, uh, 
it's all about energetic exchange and, and taking energy from one life form and applying it to another life form. So as the great white shark eats that seal, it is taking the energy from that seal and the, and, and the evolutionary quality of life the mana, the mana loa from that, from that uh, uh, seal into its body and the, and the seal becomes the shark and the shark becomes the seal at the same time. Do you understand? Am I making that clear? So, given that understanding and given that... I've got to make sure this guy on me here. Oh, good battery. Okay, so as this occurs in this planet, the Kundalini understands this and allows you certain choices that you can feel like you're making. We don't kill the ego here. We're not killing the ego. We're nurturing the ego and we're allowing the ego to go a, a different way now. No longer is it in charge. Now, a lot of the Vedic sources, a lot of the uh, uh, Taoist sources, a lot of the you know different levels of information say, "Oh, kill the ego, kill it, kill it, kill it," and I just don't see that that's that that is not. My Kundalini says, "No, that's not correct. You don't kill a part of of the divine flesh. I mean, what part of the divine flesh is not divine? Who? How do you, as a, as a five sense individual, get to choose what part of divinity is real or not?" kill the ego we retrain it just as we would our our four-year-old that is saying you know well i want to be i want to be in control mommy and mommy says no no now it's time for you to get ready to go to school and this is this is what will you know i will control this for you i will control your choices i will give you many choices but i will control the the uh quality in the context of the choices that you're going to make. And this is exactly what the Kundalini will begin to tell uh, the, uh, the, the, the girl in France to do. Control the ego. Retrain the ego. And the Kundalini will bring up uh, uh, paradigms of instruction. Uh, you know, whether the person is, uh, uh, you know, what, whatever the quality of the person that, that the challenges that that are given in the West here in the United States certainly, uh, you know, Hollywood is a big deal. A lot of films, a lot of people going, okay, I need to look that way. I need to look like a supermodel. I need to look like, geez, uh, <laughs> I don't know who the supermodels are these days. So help me out with that. But I need to look like so and so, or 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 I'm not considered beautiful. I need to be as smart as so-and-so, or I'm not considered intelligent. And so the Kundalini will come in and go, well, no, that's not, this is not, no. Uh, we're going to change your level of appreciation. And the Kundalini will indeed come in and begin to change that person's level of appreciation about what is beauty, what is intelligence, what is compassion, what is tolerance, what is honesty, what is truth. No longer will the person be given the school of the five sense mentality or the school of competition or the school of of making judgments about other people because it it in the in the old days of, of of that person's development would have made them feel better at the expense of another person. No longer is that allowed to occur. You don't get to have that choice anymore. Kundalini takes that choice off the table, as it does many other options that we may have had in our in our pre-Kundalini development existences. We no longer get to say, oh, might is right. We no longer get to say that, oh, well, because you're a certain gender and I'm a certain gender, well, I get to control you or hurt you or take your energy. No longer will, will, will one gender be devalued over the other because in the Kundalini context, they're both equal. They may have different jobs to do, but they're both equal. You can't have one without the other. 
so what you're seeing happening in this world today, in the geopolitical matrix of the world, you know, Russia taking over Ukraine or trying to, and all of these things, these are just the machinations of ego uh, that is working towards the development of having the divine flesh. And so as we enter the, the Kundalini school of choice or not choice, the Kundalini begins to form your level of options just as it did before you even took the body. Kundalini is divinity. But it's divinity without the, the desire to be noticed for being divine. It's divinity that doesn't need the lure of great powers, because it already is that great power. It's helping the human being uh, within the earth matrix come into itself, coming into divinity. But it's not, an, uh, it's not always the same way for each person because we have different karma. But there are similarities and there are certain rules that must be, be given. And, and one of those rules is to, is to offer the, the, the human child choices within certain guidelines that will allow them to continue to produce evolution within themselves. And some of this is by behavior mod moderation or behavior modulation, changing the behavior. So we go back to the French girl in technologically advanced France, right? And this person will be given certain levels of teachings, uh, teachings in the daily life. You know, someone or something will happen to that person and boom, that that French girl is given an option to respond in this way or that way. And the kundalini within her will demonstrate what was the right choice to be made and, and, and how can you do this better, if, you know, given the next level of, of choices that are being, that, that that person will have within their life. So, for, for instance, if you chose, well, okay, uh, uh, you know, I will, I will, the flower and hand it to the to the elderly person on the street. And oh, they will be so happy. And yet the Kundalini will go, well, did that plant have to die in order for you to give joy to that other person? Could you not give them a living flower? And that, would that not be the better way to go? What do you think, my Kundalini awakened child? Sometimes it's really hard to do these shows because I have to, to, to <laughs> you're going to hear turkeys. We have wild turkeys out here. <laughs> so, I hear them. So, yeah, they're gobbling right now. This is, this is their gobble, gobble season. Spring, you know, everybody, everybody's having sex right now in the matrix. <laughs> I was going to say I wish, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> so, so yeah, could you not have given that person a living flower rather than killing and, and taking? And so, higher understandings are being given to this person, to, to the French girl and technological friends. And uh, well, this. This person is, you know, well, you know, she's an astute uh, student of the Kundalini, and she'll begin to make these choices and to make new choices based upon the information and based upon the status of of her communication with her Kundalini, with, and if she has a teacher with her teacher. This is the quality of choices that were given within a Kundalini matrix. Uh, and once again, I have to put the warning out there. My words right now are loaded with shakti, and partly it's because I'm I'm getting I'm, the kundalini in me is amping up for the seminar that I'm giving. Uh, did, were you able to make those announcements, Amelia? Yes, I was, Chrism. Do you wish okay. me to make them again? Do that now. Do that now. Okay. Give me a moment. Yeah, I will. 
Okay, well, as I said to you earlier, um, there is a seminar happening in on the 22nd of March and the 23rd of March in New York, 35 miles north of New York. Now, should anybody be really interested in attending this, even though it's very short notice, please do contact me and I'll see what I can do at kundaliniMatters at gmail.com. It is Saturday the 22nd and Sunday the 23rd of March. Again, the next seminar is happening in Europe and it's located in Ireland and that is on the 29th and the 30th of March and there are a few places still available for this. Um, it is a two-day residential seminar led by Quism and people are going to be arriving on the Friday night. I will be picking people up from the airport, bringing them to the um, seminar house and then the seminar begins on Saturday morning after breakfast and runs right through until 5 p.m. on Sunday. Um, this is going to be a wonderful seminar. And please, if you have any interest, if you're living anywhere in Europe or in Ireland, do contact me on kundalinimatters at gmail.com and I can give you more details and more information. Or I'll give you my phone number as well. It's 00353. 860297676. And Thank that's you. the Thank information. You. Okay. And I just want you to know all the uh, this is not typically for the thousands and thousands of people, the masses. Uh I suppose that if I were uh, following the Indian model and, and uh, putting myself out there as a as a Chrism, I can't hear you. Hello. No, your voice has gone very very far back. I lost you when you said if I was following the Indian model. Can we do it a sound check? No, I am not hearing you, Chrism. Oh, heard a noise there. No, not yet. No. I'm going to check with John Chrism um, to see if he can still hear you in the other room. One moment. No, Chris and John can't hear you either. Hello? I can still see Chris in here in the studio, so I know he's still online and on air, but just not getting his voice, and I'm not even sure that he can hear me. I'm going to talk for a little bit until his voice comes back again. Um, it's very interesting, you know, um, what Chris says there, just the subject matter itself, because at very early on in the show, when, he, when I asked the question and he was talking about, you know, free will and choice being the same, and as he was in that, um, explaining all of that, it completely and absolutely connected. I completely understood what it was he was he was speaking of, and then, you know, I, um, just after that, then he went into bliss. And for me, and I'm I'm curious to know, was it the same for other listeners? I could really feel the energy in my ears. I'm also wearing earphones because I'm connected here to the. Um, oh, hold on. Let me just check. Hello, is that you, Chrism? I'm here. Hello. Oh, hi. You're back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not. I, I don't follow the Indian model, and so I don't have thousands of billions of uh, followers. And so uh, this allows one-on-one -on -one contact. And I make it a point at these seminars to have one-on-one -on -one contact with you. And I'm going to have one-on-one -on -one contact with everybody who's coming to these seminars. And so if this is what you're looking for. It's just, if you like the information that's coming out here, then come, come. These are not pricey seminars. You're not paying $5,000 for a ticket. Maybe I should do that. Maybe that's something I should do. I mean, 
maybe the, some of the other some of the listeners can give me some feedback. Do I need to charge five thousand dollars for a seminar? Mm-hmm. I can. I, I think we can all, you know, figure out what the answer to that is. So anyway, yeah, come, come if you can, come if you can. I, you know, uh, nobody's making big profits here. Uh, you know, Amelia, Amelia needs to be paid back for the money she's put out. And uh, I want you to feel free to make a donation to John and Amelia O'Connor. Uh, seriously, because you guys. Put this show out. This is you're paying a monthly fee uh, um, to put this radio show on, right? Yeah, Chrism, and and thank you. But if people want to make a donation, this is our contribution um, to support Kundalini Awakening seminars and systems, and you as our teacher. So, and 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 everybody else that needs to hear this information. So, we don't actually want a donation. I would like for that donation to be given to the website that I gave earlier if people would like to contribute. And contributions are very welcome and are very necessary. So I'm going to actually, if I may give that address out again, and um, thinking here, what is it? <laughs> it's w- oh, www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. I think that's it. So thank oh. you, Chris, but that's what I'd like people to do, please. Okay. All right, then. <laughs> All right. So let's get back to these choices. Uh, people, because, or, am I there? Hello? Yes, you are. Okay. Because people's karmas are different, uh, because of the choices they have made during their evolutionary, their soul evolutionary path, uh, everybody's made different choices. We've made different choices in 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 in, the, in different in a different context uh, and in different lifetimes. And so, you know, if if, if one person is, is making a you know, well, oh boy, I, yeah. So different choices with different people because different lives were lived in different ways and. One guy was a Roman soldier. One girl was a was a was an ancient astronaut. I mean, different lives develop different choices for the next life. Some 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 say that your 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 the choices that you make today are developing your future life, and to some degree that's right. But the choices you make today are also based on choices that you've made in other lives, and so. You know, there's a continuity, there's a river of evolution that is occurring with each life as, as, as we live it. And the choices you make today will indeed have an effect on the choices you make later on in other lifetimes. But within a Kundalini context, uh, it's a different deal because the Kundalini is, help, is, is beginning to choose the level of information that you're allowed to have based upon your karma. So we'll go back to the French girl in techno- technological France. Um, you know, uh, you know, she, she, she lives according to her past lives. Yes, she, her karma is, is, is given uh, due to the choices she's made in other lives, but now she has the Kundalini. And now the Kundalini is defining her existence. And by that def- definition, she is given specific choices within certain uh, life experience. So we'll say our French girl is a uh, medical doctor. Our French girl is is Dr. Suzanne. Uh, what's a French name? Uh, uh, LeBrock. <laughs> okay. So Dr. LeBrock uh, is given certain uh, choices to make with the patients that she receives. So she will treat a patient with, uh, with, a, with a heart murmur a certain way. Now, 
the Kundalini will give her specific information that her other MD friends won't have. Okay, she'll know. She'll just know to do a certain kind of lab work on a person. She'll just know that uh, maybe with this person with a heart issue, need, maybe she needs to look into their teeth and what have they had root canals? Are they, do they, what are the conditions of her teeth? And most physicians will not look at the quality of a person's uh, uh, dental health in order to ascertain uh, information on a, on a heart patient. But this 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 Dr. LeBrock will be able to because she has the Kundalini, and the Kundalini will go, ah, with this person you need to look at that option, that option for disease. And because our Kundalini girl, our, our Dr. LeBrock is Kundalini awakening, well, she's listening to that Kundalini intuition guide her. Uh, and, and she'll be given information on how to adjust her behaviors. Uh, how, how does she respond? To, does she let other people's attitudes control her diagnosis? Does she let other people's wants and desires uh, uh, control how she treats her patients? You know, and so many, many, many levels of understanding are given between the Kundalini and the Kundalini recipient or the Kundalini awakened or awakening. And just to, for, for folks who may be listening to this, uh, Kundalini activation is fairly easy to do, even though it's hard. Uh, Kundalini awakening, oh, now that's a very, very different scenario. And that, is, that goes for the rest of your life. Don't buy into any information, and this is coming from me, Chris, and don't buy into any information that tells you that you can awaken the Kundalini, and I had it last summer, it was great, and now I'm looking for something else. That is not Kundalini. Kundalini never stops. It never, ever stops. Once it's up, it's up, and the genie is out of that bottle for the rest of your incarnated existences to the point where you will not incarnate anymore. And here's another one. Here's some more disinformation that I want to uh, clear up for you. Once you have Kundalini activated and you're in the awakening process, don't believe somebody who says, oh, you'll never have to take a life again. That's not true. You will have to come back again and again and again, but within a Kundalini awakened context. Okay. Uh, people like to add and they like to embellish a lot of uh, qualities and, and, uh, and information that is not correct about what happens when Kundalini people uh, or when a, when a person becomes Kundalini awakened, and you know some of, some some folks will say, "Oh, you'll never have to 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 to, to be alive on this planet again." Oh my gosh, you, you've done this and that. Well, this planet is very very good for Kundalini awakened people to continue to learn from, and and uh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to guide you not to to take that information seriously. Uh, and know and understand that you can have one, two, three, four, five, six lives of being Kundalini awakened. Now, hopefully, as you as you have the divine flesh and you are the flesh made divine, that you learn you 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 able to you're able to learn faster in a greater way. And certainly, if you're if you're uh, with a an authentic Kundalini awakened teacher uh, as your guide in this life. Uh, you will go even even faster, and there may be uh, there may not need to be a necessity excuse me a necessity for you to have you know as many lives with the Kundalini awakened within you as you had getting to the point of Kundalini awakening. Uh, it's a it's like let's see it's geez I can't even relate it to to scholastic terms that we use here. Let's just suffice to say that as much as you need to be conditioned here on this planet, having Kundalini is what you will receive. And you will not get to choose that. That will be chosen for you. But by this point, you have to remember, you're the flesh made divine, and so you are the Kundalini. The Kundalini is you. It's just that the the mother and father Kundalini, shall we say, sacred mother, sacred male, sacred father, uh, 
have direct levels of influence upon what you do, how you do, where you do, anything that you do. But because they love you and they want you to become what they are, they allow you to make certain choices. And those choices will determine whether or not you're going to come back uh, into a corporeal life existence and have to have the flesh, your your body um, uh, reactivated, or reawakened with the Kundalini because as a child you will come back with Kundalini awakening phenomena. I mean, the stuff that you've already had by virtue of another life, which is what happened with me. This may also happen to those of you who are currently Kundalini awakened. So don't think that you'll never, ever need to come back because there, there are some reasons for coming back. And one of the reasons that a person will come back is to help others. Your love may be so great, so profound, that you'll be willing to sacrifice uh, time spent, shall we say, uh, going off into the heavenly fields to help others come into those heavenly fields or to help others who are who are struggling within a, a destitution or, or, or war or famine or, you know, many of the very difficult places that and, 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 and very difficult spiritual evolutionary options that are here on this planet. As you as you die, Kundalini awakened. You come in and you review everything that occurred, and you you know you you review it with the Kundalini, with divinity. And if you so choose to come back within that model, then you will be allowed to do that. There are no hard and fast rules with this. Don't buy into people telling you that there are hard and fast rules. Uh, that that you know that that they that they incorporate within a religious system or spiritual belief system or something of that nature, which which occurs a lot. That occurs a lot here in this world. Uh, the Christians will say, "I was approached by Jehovah's Witnesses today." As a matter of fact, <laughs> I want to say this because this is very cool. I was out there uh, playing with Lasha which, you know, she loves to do and I love to do with her. And and uh, the, the two, uh, uh, not elderly, but, you know, maybe they were in maybe their 50s or 60s. And uh, they wanted to, to show me the benefits of Jehovah's Witnesses and that belief system. And, you know, I was guided to, to allow them to come and approach and, and to have a conversation with them. And so I did. I had a nice conversation with them and I let them, know how I felt about their their uh, belief system and uh, and that I was you know it's, I thought it was very honorable for them to come house to house and and gently and peacefully uh, uh, expose people to their belief system and they started telling me about Genesis and I thought well this would be interesting so I said is this the King James version of Genesis I said well no this is the new whatever it is new some sort of new interpretation among the many hundreds of interpretations of of uh, the Bible. <laughs> so they started going through the seven days of creation and telling me, well, it's not really the day as we see it. And all of a sudden, the Kundalini flowed into my interaction with them, and I began to see that Genesis is really a Kundalini awakening example. You know, the the... the the earth was dark, or the, you know, dark and void, and and uh, which basically means someone sleeping in a sleep. And then the light is given, and that is the Kundalini. And then the the light, the seven days of creation are like my seven days of Shaktipat. <laughs> In fact, it's like whoa, that was a great that was a great enlightenment for me, and I just really enjoyed it. So I'll just pass that on to you. Uh, kind of a. Uh, not apropos of our conversation, but sort of, sort of is because, once again, the the, the Kundalini is is giving me the choice to, to, uh, to give this to you or not, and I've chosen to give it to you. So I have choice, but within a Kundalini context, am that choice. I am Kundalini now, and so will you, and so are some of you as well. 
Now, if you have any questions about your choice and about uh, this this topic of conversation that we're having, uh, I'm going to ask Amelia to give that number out. And here it is, 347-934-0026. And apologies again to everybody in the chat room. I don't know if you heard this, Chris, but I've only the iPad, so... I haven't had any communication with the chat room. I can't see them. <laughs> okay. So. Well, yes. So we just trust. We trust the Kundalini. We trust the Kundalini yes. implicitly. And what the Kundalini will allow to, you know, for people to receive here in the chat room. Hello, everybody in the chat room. I'm just going to say a few names. Bajji, Julie. Um, uh, maybe uh, uh, Sigrid. And husband, and uh, any of the other people that may be listening at the chat room, Bruno Amatori, I always enjoy seeing him, um, and and all the other people who may be there. Uh, hello, hello, hello! Welcome to you. This has been a uh, a very interesting show. How much? How many more minutes do I have? Uh, and yeah. twenty-one minutes, Chris. Uh, twenty-one. Uh, that's a good <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So. I want to open it up to any questions, any any calls that anybody may wish to make. Uh, Amelia just gave the number out, and she'll give it again. And uh, feel free to call in at this time. Go ahead, Amelia. Okay, 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. So, you know, to, to bring into summation... Uh, Within a Kundalini context, you're given specific choices to, to live your Kundalini awakening life by. And these choices will always be of a, one, karmic nature, two, uh, uh, striving towards uh, the Kundalini evolution, going, you know, going further up the mountain. Uh, within a non-awakened uh, context, uh, you will be given the choices that your karma decides for you to have. What you have given is what you will receive. What you have done is what will be done. Just say unmuted when you're... Hello? Hello? This okay. is weird Hello. Hello. Okay. Okay, Prison. Sorry, I might have just muted you by accident. Really? Yeah. Pardon me. We have a call coming in. Okay. I'm going to put. I'm going to put the person directly onto you now. Apologies for that. All right. Hi, Hello. caller. Hello. It's Bastian. Amelia. <laughs> no, Hi, it's not Amelia. Bastian. It's Jake, you're on air. Okay. Great. Okay. Chris. Um, Hi, Jake. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Great show. Just listening. I came in about maybe 15 minutes late, but it doesn't matter. No one's yeah. late in life. Uh, uh, really I, really I good relate. show. <laughs> I can um, relate to being a little late, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess um, just following your line, I'm exactly where you're talking about. And, um, you know, um, it's it's difficult to put into a perspective, because, you know, because you've been having trouble putting it in. But, you know, I know when you're circling around looking for the mother and father in the womb that you're going to choose everything – and when you zero in, oh, okay, you chose all of that. Okay. Now, I guess, you know, you have the choices as you go along in life, too. You know, each thing chooses because, you know, it's an open choice field as, as we grow and, and prosper. Um, uh, sometimes uh, Kundalini, I guess, comes along uh, spontaneously, but it's never really spontaneously. Um, it may Jake. be from a, a, what? Jake. Yeah. It is not an open field of choice. Uh-huh. It is not an open field of choice. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, it, your karma, your karma will begin to sculpt what your options are. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. So your karma, your karma will, will help you choose your parents. So based upon what has happened and what must occur in order to, to achieve any kind of a balance based upon what has happened, uh, parents and circumstances will be presented to a person if, if they have evolved to the point where they are given the option to choose. Before they're given the option to choose, they are not allowed to choose. It is chosen for them. Mm -hmm. So Charles Manson, when he dies, you know, may not be given choices how his life goes. And he may. He just may. I mean, we don't know what he did. He could have been a saint in a past life. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so based upon the laws of karma, what you give is what you get. Uh, Your choices will be given to you. And you will have choices, but when you're circling around, as, as you as you uh, as you describe, which I like, I like that term. Uh, it's not just you flying around a couple of people that are about to make love, and then you diving in and 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 you know in, inhabiting the embryo that that occurs. It is a very very intricate uh, and yet simple process of. Guidance being given from a divine source. You do not get to make your choices. You are allowed to make some choices within a specific range of of karma. Do you understand what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, I, throughout throughout all life, that that really happens. That's why if you have a an inclination for mathematics, you go into that. You know, whatever that kind of thing. Uh, you know, you go into what you uh, have an inclination for, or what you can handle, or you know what you've been prepared for. Well, where do you think that inclination comes from? I think it comes from, like, um, I would say the, the will of, uh, of the Father or, or or you would say Kundalini, too. So you're saying from divinity, then? From what? I'm sorry, Chris. I'm... From, from divinity, perhaps. Yes, yes. I would say that. Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think, I think you're right on target there, Jake, as usual. <laughs> thank, thank you. Uh, so, so we choose. Uh, so we actually choose uh, Kundalini, uh, even I though it may be, seem spontaneous, and we we don't know where the hell it came from, or it came from another life, or something. Uh, we've actually, you know, prepared ourselves and done everything uh, to get there. You know. Uh, in this the, in this life, the the divine uh, guidance is always towards itself. So uh, we are being helped up the mountain of evolution, and the one aspect towards uh, towards that evolution is to have the kundalini come into the life. And as you say, uh, once we reach a certain level of evolution, we are given the different options about how that kundalini would come. And yeah, it may seem spontaneous to the person that's having it if it comes spontaneously to them. Uh, but it's not. It is not accidental. Even if you you know, you know, have the comminuted fracture of the spine or the tailbone, it's not accidental. You had to get in the car. You, you, had, to sl- you had to get on the ski slopes and slam into a tree. I mean, you had to do everything right to allow that to occur. Right. Yeah, nothing's accidental in the universe. That's what I believe. <laughs> so, so within that within that understanding, then mm-hmm. you have you have made certain choices, a certain menu, shall we say, a certain menu of choices were offered to you, and you mm-hmm. chose one specific dish off of that menu. Mm-hmm. And now you're eating that dish. That dish is your lifetime. Uh huh. Uh huh. Another another thing, like 
I guess when I got uh, done with my rural traveling early, I don't always like to, well, my military and my crazy uh, early life, and I came back and went into college, I thought I had a, a, a much bigger understanding than the average student, even though I was only a year or two older than them. Uh, and, and I guess I've always had, I, I find it hard to, uh, like, uh, you know, look at look at the world through the the average American's eyes, or the you know, and most worldly eyes, but especially American. You know, so I it, it, it is the the trouble seems to I I think I'm as you always say you think I was awakened, <laughs> but I don't know. But who knows anyway? You know, sometimes you can be and not even know it. Whatever. But anyway, I'll let you go on with the conversation, and I can't wait to see you, and uh, I'm listening intently. <laughs> thank you, Jake. Jake and Ellie, thank yeah. you both. Great show, and I can't wait to see you guys. Yeah, just, it'll be a pleasure, Jake. It'll be a pleasure yeah, for bye. both. Yep, bye now. Bye-bye. Okay, and, and if anybody else would like to call in, feel, please feel free to call in. Uh, within a Kundalini context. Go ahead. 347-934-0026. How many more minutes do I have? You have another caller, Chris, in one moment. Thank you. Just. Hello, caller. You're very welcome. Hello, Santara. How are you? <laughs> I'm very, I'm very good. You're live on air directly. <laughs> Welcome, Ma- Master C. What a fascinating topic. <laughs> you know, I, I, um, I, I was sitting here with the wife, and we listen when she gets in from work, and she, she always catches me in here listening. You said something that touched a, a chord in me, and I, 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 something that I had been thinking. You know my background, and you know that one of the ultimates is, of course, to, uh, in your spiritual unfoldment, to not have to come back into the physical world anymore because, you know, the physical world is seen as like the cesspool of the universe or the spiritual universe is. When you said something about you might choose to come back uh, to aid in the unfoldment and just to help in the unfoldment of your other sentient beings, it really, something went off in my head and I said, you know, this is something that I felt uh, any enlightened being would do. Uh, because the more we move into this oneness with divinity or the the kundalini, the more we begin to think like it or as it. And it would not ever leave anyone behind. Can you speak on that? Nobody gets left behind, that's for sure. (laughs) Can you speak on that? I mean... because it's a, it's a powerful commitment to come back into, you know, from heaven into hell uh, just because you love God so much. And you love you love your fellow mortals so much. Indeed. You know, because the thing is, is once you become that divine flesh, it, it changes your level of love. It changes your level of understanding about what trauma people are going through. It changes your level of compassion and, and your level of, of tolerance. It's not easy coming back here. Uh, it, it's not easy uh, surviving and, and going through the, the whole competition for life to continue within you, the, the eating of foods, the procurement of foods, and, and the, the, the sustaining the life of a it's very it's very difficult and yet when you have the kundalini come up within you you have that level of love that will help you as you as you as you incarnate and you have your kundalini you have to remember the kundalini 
doesn't just go away because you're taking a life. Now, the the one thing that will occur that that is that can be traumatic for that ego, even that Kundalini awakened ego, because you agreed to go behind the to to go back under the veil of pseudo forgetfulness. And for for the Kundalini awakened person, it's pseudo forgetfulness. It's not total forgetfulness like it is for many of the other people on this planet. It's pseudo forgetfulness because you you have connection to divinity that that you even don't understand as you go back under the veil. Mm-hmm. Okay. But mm-hmm. as your kundalini awakens in that body once again, wham, you know, you you were you were given far much more than you would have even in your first awakening. Indeed. Okay, and so Indeed. you're you're here to to serve, you're here to help, you're here to assist, you're here to be. You're here to radiate grace. Now not everybody radiates grace the same way. Uh, I radiate grace a certain way. Other people radiate grace a different way. Uh, you are here to provide a a pillar of light mm-hmm. for those who might wish to see it. For those who are not ready to see it, they won't. But for those who can and are, they will. And most, yeah. most of the population... Uh, will respond to to divinity because divinity. I'm trying to find a place where I can hold the phone without disconnecting us. Uh, most, all well, actually, almost all species of life on this planet will respond in a specific way to divinity, and most of it is to lean towards it, to to yearn to have it, to lean towards it. Uh, if you were to <laughs> If you were to stand at a Kundalini awakened person in one place in a field of plants, if you were there, if they were there long enough, they would you would see the plants would lean toward mm-hmm. the radiance. Yes. And so would the animals. So would the animals lean towards that radiance. Which is why out of all the chairs in this house and we've got you know, at least at least ten, not including the toilet. Uh, <laughs> That's my think tank. <laughs> Lasha, Lasha will choose to sit in the in the chair that has the most radiance, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, as will the fleas and the bugs and the, and the <laughs> you know. <laughs> I got no problem with that. <laughs> well, I also wanted to thank you um, for allowing yourself to be authentic uh, for all of us that will listen to uh, this talk and the power of bliss uh, and grace that can affect uh, a person or a, uh, I don't want to say channel because I don't want people to think that I'm think I'm talking about channeling, but no, we're not someone who is willing to open themselves up at that moment to divine grace uh, sometimes it becomes difficult to communicate. Uh, I think I I had a, a similar experience while trying to tell you about an inner experience I had seeing you uh, once. But uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm going to get off so you can wrap it up. <laughs> I, look, I look forward to seeing you, too. Yes. Yes. I look forward to seeing you, too. Minneapolis. Minneapolis, that's right. Minneapolis, yes, indeed. Blessings to you, Master. Thank you, and to you as well. And blessings to you, Amelia, and John, and Emma, and Jonathan, and all the the older uh, uh, children that you have. Blessings to Rosemary, and Francine, whose house we're at here, and to Lasha, and all our fellow mortals, whether they be plants, or insects, or fish, or mammals or those not even yet discovered in the upper atmosphere. Uh, Blessings to everyone for for partaking of this show. Listen to this show over and over and over. For those of you that want an activation uh, sequence, practice the safeties, number one. Change your behaviors. No more revenge, no more grudges, no more, uh, you know, outlandish angers. Uh, Practice the safeties. Listen to these interviews. And... uh, May the blessings of grace fall 
steadily upon your shoulders and around your being. Thank you for listening.